Hi, I'm Ali Patterson and welcome to this episode of The Paytech Show. We often hear about how innovation in payments is booming on the African continent, more specifically in Kenya. With M-Pesa already widely adopted, it's a very exciting hub for further contactless innovations. This has all come to a head with the COVID-19 pandemic. Cash is no longer safe for a lot of people, so people who maybe once relied on it are looking to new forms of payment. As a result, we take a look at the transport industry in Nairobi and see how people are working together to enable a safe and a convenient way to travel. Joining me in the virtual studio today is Dr. Nuraj Burton, all the way from Mauritius. Dr. Nuraj is the business development manager at BPC, a company dedicated to bringing real life into the digital world. Can you tell me a little bit about this project that you've been working on in Kenya? What exactly is this project and uh, what's been going on there in the last few weeks and months? Uh, thank you. Actually, my name is uh, Dr. Niraj Burton. I look after the business development uh, in Africa for payment and uh, OCT. OCT is the automatic fare collection platform that uh, we have in our product portfolio on BPC. And my responsibility is to ensure that uh, uh, most of the countries adopt those type of concept uh, of uh, automatic fare collection, cashless environment. Uh, the first project that we have been working uh, in the in the region is specifically in Nairobi, uh, in Kenya, where uh, during the pandemic uh, there was quite a rush in terms of uh, uh, people getting on board of bus and also having issues to pay because. Being with cash uh, has a lot of insecurity in this pandemic uh, 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 environment. So that's why we came up with a cashless uh, environment and we had a very strategic partner in Nairobi that helped us to put uh, the, the scope together to understand the market, to understand the business requirement, to understand how people behave because the, the, the solution, the platform has to adapt to all circumstances within the environment. Very, uh, very well said. When you say the solution needs to adapt to all circumstances, what are some of these uh, circumstances that it needs to adapt to? Right, so uh, paying with cash uh, has lots of uh, insecurity reasons behind. One is health, because uh, uh, this was uh, uh, something which was very important to the authority regarding uh, cashless transaction. And when you cash is moving from hands to hands, there are lots of uh, uh, health issues that happen during those COVID-19 uh, 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 activities. So uh, the, one of the inconveniences was obviously physical contact with uh, people. Second uh, inconvenience was uh, uh, it, ha it didn't have a very efficient manner of uh, reporting towards each stakeholder. So those type of, uh, of transaction were recorded online on a platform and this platform provide any type of reporting towards uh, shareholders. One of the things that I personally love about, uh, well, M-Pesa is it gives, it gives a record, which when it comes to financial inclusion, it completely, it changes the game. And that's the biggest drawback with cash, there is no record. What are some of the um, opportunities around that? All right. So uh, let me actually elaborate a bit be better on the, on the platform and the opportunity. You know, actually, the transport uh, industry in Nairobi, uh, in the main cities, are mostly driven by cash payment. A few years ago, uh, the M-Pesa in place, uh, the payment was partly done through this wallet. But the adoption was low. Uh, this was because of several technical and business reasons. Recently, with uh, the contact payment initiative, I'm able through the OCT platform, we contracted, as I mentioned, through a strategic partner, a proof of concept. First, we started with a proof of concept, and this coincided with uh, the pandemic period of COVID-19. This was very much in line with the expectation of government, the authorities, and the project uh, is now fully functional, in operation, and has been the vastly been adopted by operators and communicators. Today, uh, the, the traffic is growing, and which is a very, very good sign. The OCT automated fare collection platform leverage on all type of wallets within the country, uh, including M-Pesa. And it, it's adopted by more than 90% of the population. 
How is it at the uh, at the moment with a population of that particular size? I mean, just tell me a little bit about the transport market in Kenya at the moment. Yeah, with with, with a population of forty million plus, uh, the major in the major traffic cities are mainly in Kenya, uh, Nairobi, Mombasa, and Nakuru, which are highly dense. So in Nairobi, the public transport system is essentially run by private operators. Uh, the city council opted for a deregulated market in line with national policy. Along the years, two main types of public transport operation emerge out of this deregulated environment. First was Kenya Bus Service, KBS, which was formerly a company with a large fleet of buses and minibuses. And on the other hand, the Matatus, both often competing along the same routes. Uh, the Matatu became then a major competitor in the city to KBS and their number grew significantly. Today, the Matatu account for more than 70% of uh, public transport and more than 70% of the population use this mean of transport. Well, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about O-City. How, uh, how does the O-City service, how does it impact uh, the travellers? What's the impact that it's had out in Kenya? Yeah. So uh, transparency is very key towards share, uh, stakeholders. Uh, so there's more transparency in the fare collection and the business relationship between the matter to owners and the drivers and conductors are actually in a better coordinated manner. Uh, fraud has been drastically reduced uh, and the commutators enjoy convenience through just in time efficient service. Moving to cashless bring more security in the environment. Uh, the model of Matatu owners leasing the vehicle to drivers on a fixed monthly amount can evolve in a win-win partnership, bringing quality service to the communities. So you think that um, moving to cashless has some sort of other knock-on effects as well? Um, so for example, in the UK uh, with Uber, whenever I go in a non-Uber vehicle, I just, I just assume the payment's taken automatically. Do you think there's almost that kind of knock-on effect or that that expectation that frictionless payments could bring to other industries? Well, uh, there, there will be cases where actually people uh, are not uh, 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 cannot adopt technologies because of uh, economic reasons. Uh, when I say in rural places, uh, there might be uh, people having uh, no access to mobile phones. Right. So in these situations cash will still be there. Uh, adopting a frictionless uh, environment completely in a developing country is a challenge. But frictionless environment bring more transparency and also uh, it's a lean way of uh, collecting money uh, through frictionless transaction because the debit and credit are done automatically and there is no actually contact with cash. Could we please go into some of the um, some of the key drivers for the success around this project? First of all, I would say I would say that in this type of uh, environment, when we are dealing with uh, uh, different stakeholders, uh, the local partner is very key to the success of the project, and uh, he has to understand very well the the business, transport business, and the concept uh, with, and the, 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 the partner should have a very good, good credentials because here we're talking about uh, frictionless transaction, debit, credit, and it's an automatic debit and, uh, and credit. So the credentials are very important for the local partner. The service platform uh, is to be actually user-friendly because if it is not user-friendly, then there will be uh, uh, retention of adopting this technology. Uh, the risk factor should be very low in, in, in those type of service platform. Uh, obviously, for people to adopt uh, that type of technology, uh, awareness campaign is very important. So awareness campaign, I would say, uh, strong marketing and communication budget should be voted, which we actually are currently doing in, in Nairobi. Uh, we have actually TV coverage, uh, 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 media coverage, social media coverage, to ensure that people understand the benefit of using frictionless 
OCT uh, platform. Uh, also, it is very important, it's not only to bring awareness to the commentators, it is also to educate people, to educate people how to, to actually uh, uh, benefit from the service. Because there's no point in putting a technology uh, which is very efficient and people uh, doesn't know how to use it. Uh, also, the reliability of the platform, because here we're talking about 20, 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, the platform has to be uh, performing. So if there is any technical uh, issues, so people will refrain from using this technology. So reliability of the platform is also a major, major important driver. Uh, ease of integration, I would say, because uh, the, the the landscape in, in, in Nairobi, in Kenya in general, there are actually one 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 wallet which is M-Pesa, uh, which is well known from Safaricom. But there are also several wallets also from from different banks, from different uh, telecom operators. And the ease of integration is very important because sometimes people will stick to the to the mode of payment that they use. Uh, if it is a wallet, if it is actually uh, a cashless uh, um, transaction. If it is card, card based, sometimes there's card based, right? So we have to actually have an ease uh, of integration with all those uh, type of possibilities of payment. And obviously, I would say if the matter to owners see the real benefit in terms of higher return of investment, that's where actually they will bring in more vehicles toward the platform. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the integration element. Uh, what's been some of the reaction around integration there? Because, I mean, that's got to be the absolute key. I mean, it's, it's easy for someone to onboard and use this platform, but, well, if you can do that, that's half the battle won. Yeah. Well, I, I think the, 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 the very important aspect of those type of projects is how the, the authority uh, support those type of initiatives. So the authority, which is uh, the National Safety Transport Authority of Nairobi, ensure that all the stakeholders having their own channel of payment uh, bring, come, come with an open loop system platform, right? And the motivation is there because uh, the more the transaction goes to their channel, the it's benefit themselves better, right? So that openness is very important when it is driven from the top, that means from the authority itself. How is the project going to date? Whereabouts are we at with the project? The project is live. The service has high adoption and the number are increasing day by day. The National Transport Safety Authority uh, has provided a letter of award to our OCT platform through our uh, strategy partner to be the official platform service for, to the population. Uh, this is also in line with what actually the, the authority wants to bring forward in terms of contact tracing. It's very important for them to understand the mobility of the people, the communicators, because uh, at a certain point in time, there was some restriction going in the city at a specific time period. So it's very important to know who was not actually aligning with the regulations. And those, those platform, the OCT platform, brings is some, some type of reporting that provide those type of information. So the project to date is it's live, it's being adopted. And obviously there's more to go because we have to now look for other routes, look for other uh, cooperatives in terms of the matter to owners. Uh, and uh, this is very interesting because uh, the, the government itself is supporting this initiative. What are some of the results that you've had so far in terms of cashless adoption? What's been the, the kind of uptake? Yeah, so Kenya through M-Pesa is uh, vastly a, a cashless environment, but a city has brought a revolution in the way payment is affected, specifically in the transport industry. And today, uh, as I'm talking today, we have more than 2,500 drivers that are connected on the platform, and the number of increasing day by day. And the good thing is that uh, our local partner is heavily recruiting field agents. Uh, it's good to have good communication through press, through social media, but in certain places, it's important to have a physical contact and a, a physical explanation. So we now are now busy recruiting field agents to be on the field, to be in the bus, 
and to ensure that the system is being adopted and, and assist any type of issues that they might uh, cope up. Against that, uh, that backdrop, what are you trying to achieve? What's the end game, the end goal? Where will you think, do you know what? We've, uh, we've completed this. Well, I think it's very much in line with the digitalization process of the Kenyan government. Uh, they are very, very into it and they are ensuring that uh, uh, on, on terms of banking, payment, insurance, uh, even the, the social uh, benefit program are, are actually on, on boarded on e-services and e-platforms. So digital, digitalization process is already uh, having some effect in, in, in Kenya. And this is very much in line with the strategy of government. When we go cashless, uh, we actually uh, meet the objective of the government. And the good thing is that uh, the proactivity of that system have now opened the eyes of most of the stakeholders in the possibility uh, in terms of features, in terms of service that they can offer to the communicators through contactless approach. You've managed to achieve um, quite a lot in a very short space of time. What's, um, what's next? Where else are you seeing this kind of uh, expand within transport? Definitely. Uh, BPC, actually, we are putting lots of emphasis on this project because uh, it's a real case study and it's bringing uh, conveniency to the life of people within communities. And we expect to expand this project within the African continent. Uh, our strategic partner are already operating in seven countries. So we, through that strategic partnership, we will extend this type of services to all those countries. Uh, even in Kenya, uh, we're not only actually focusing on uh, buses, matatus. We are thinking of contemplating of bringing this service to taxis. Uh, we are also actually contemplating to bring this service for luxury coach for intercity services where there is also high volume of fraud that has been depicted on this type of services because people sometimes board the bus in midway and doesn't pay uh, also i think you are aware that uh, they have uh, recently launched the metro in kenya so this type of uh, platform the oct platform enable high interoperability uh, with different channels and also enable high interoperability with different means of transportation. And you can use the same fair media to board several means of transportation. So this is what actually is coming next. It's a thing about integration. It's something about interoperability. It's something about bringing convenience to the public uh, citizens. That's all we've got time for on this episode of The Paytech Show. It's been incredible hearing about how the Matatu buses and how these types of services will evolve going forward. With such an interoperable payment platform, it sounds like getting around in Kenya is going to become increasingly convenient. Thanks to Dr. Nuraj Burton for joining me today in the studio and for you watching at home. Thank you very much. Bye bye for now.